this short piece, we will summarize what we have done so far. So we are going to actually look at the generalized equations for an object moving along a plane. So let's start by looking at the velocity is simply defined as the r divided by dt, which is going to be equal to dx over dt i plus dy over dtj plus dz over dtk. What this means is the fact that the R therefore can be rewritten as V dt. We can further expand by integrating both sides. So the integral from R naught to our final dr will be from 0 to t or I would prefer this will be t naught to t final v dt which will imply that R final is equal to R initial plus the integral from T0 to T final V dt. This is the generalized equation that completely describes the motion. The beauty of this equation lies in the fact that if we know the function v, then we can determine the position of the particle at any time t. And when this is the case, we say that the motion of the system or the particle is completely described. But all that depends on knowing the function of V. Keep in mind that R naught occurs when T is equal to zero. We call this the initial conditions. Similarly, we know that A is dv over dt. This right here is going to be equal to dx over dt multiplied by dv over dx. What do you notice? This takes care of this, and we haven't changed anything. We call this the chain rule. I've basically used the chain rule right there. Now, this is V, so this will be equal to V dV dx. So, what I can see is that A is equal to V dV dx. This is another expression for the acceleration A. Now, A is equal to D of dt dr dt 
this will be equal to dt d square r over dt squared. This means that a is equal to d square r over dt squared. This is another exp general expression for A. And here's the last one. The fact that A is equal to dv dt also means that dv is equal to A dt. If we integrate both sides from V naught to V final, from T naught to T final, because this is with respect to T and this is with respect to V, the integral of dV is just V. So this would mean that V final minus V naught is the integral from T naught to t final a dt. So we can write this as v final equal to v naught plus the integral of t zero to t final a dt. This equation tells us how the velocity of the particle changes with respect to time. And if we know the function a, we will be able to determine at any time t the value of y, v. And when this happens, we say that the motion of the particle is completely described. So right here on the board, we have the general expression that describes how the position of the particle varies with time along a plane. We have the general expression that describes how the velocity of the particle varies along with time along the plane, as well as we have some cool equations for A that will help us to analyze any motion. Now, before we move forward into the next lesson, here is a very important point. I will call this the principle of independence of motion, which basically states that if an object moves in such a way that its velocity, position, acceleration has x, y, and a z component, then the x component is totally independent from the y component as well as it is totally independent from the z component. In other words, the horizontal motion has nothing to do with the vertical motion. What that means is, if the velocity or the acceleration in the x direction is zero, but not zero in the y direction, the velocity in the x direction will be constant why the velocity in the y direction will change, independent of each other. This really is an experimental fact that will help you in analyzing a lot of challenging problems in two-dimensional motion. Please, let's move forward with this conversation in the discussion forum. Thank you.